Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. In today's tutorial, we are going to show you how to create a simple virtual machine in Microsoft Azure portal. I've logged into portal.azure.com using my global administrator account. Once you've logged in, click on virtual machines. If you cannot see this option, simply go ahead and type the word virtual machines in the search bar and you will get that option. Select virtual machines, click on create button and select Azure virtual machine. Select the correct subscription. I've got only one, so it's defaulted to that. But if you've got multiple, make sure you select the correct subscription. Same with resource groups. If you've got an existing resource group, you can select it from there. I have an existing resource group, so I'm going to use that. But if you want to create a new resource group for this special machine, you can click the create new button and name your new resource group and click OK. Give your virtual machine a name. I'm going to call it test vm1 because this is a test environment but if this is a production environment i recommend that you give a meaningful name to your virtual machine select the region depending on where you're physically located and if you need infrastructure redundancy such as availability zone you can select one in here i do not need any infrastructure redundancy so i'm going to select no infrastructure redundancy required by default, the security type is going to be trusted launch virtual machines. Leave it at that unless you have very specific requirements. There are three options. Um, obviously, standard is the very basic one, which is not very recommended for production virtual machines. And confidential virtual machines is a new security type that is designed for highly secure environments. But for most people, trusted launch virtual machines is good enough. Now, the next thing is to select the image that you want to use. I want my virtual machine to run Windows Server 2022, so that's already selected. But if you want any other operating system, you can select that from here. Now, bear in mind, if you select uh, an image that's not owned or produced by Microsoft, such as Red Hat Linux or Ubuntu, there may be additional charges involved with you using that image. VM architecture is defaulted to 64-bit um, and the size of the VM, it's going to pick a size for you but if you have any specific requirements for the number of vCPUs or memory, you can click the all sizes link in here and it will give you an option of available VM sizes for your region. I'm going to stick with B2MS because it's a very popular uh, size and it's very cost effective and it's just enough to get the job done. Um, in terms of the administrator account, in here you need to create a local administrator account for the virtual machine that you're creating so you can log into your virtual machine. I'm going to call it admin2 and let's give it a password. Make sure the password is a very secure password. Do not give it passwords that are easy to guess especially if this VM is going to get deployed in your production environment. Now, inbound ports, by default, it's going to suggest that you open RDP ports so you can access the virtual machine over RDP over the internet. Um, but make sure that you restrict this to allow RDP only from your source IPs, which I'm going to show you how to do after the VM is created. So never, ever allow RDP to everyone over the public internet, otherwise you're going to create more problems for you, especially with brute force attacks. So let's go ahead and select the disks. Um, I'm just going to keep these as default, but you can go to standard SSD if your web server or the server that you're creating is only used for minimum tasks. Uh, this will help you reduce the cost slightly, but for production environments, premium SSD is recommended. So I'm just going to select standard SSD in this case because I'm going to just delete this VM after the video is done. So um, standard SSD is fine for me in this case. If you want to create and attach a data disk which you want to store files or um, any other content, you can create and attach a new disk by clicking this link here. Now I'm going to go next for networking. So every virtual machine that you create in Azure obviously needs a network, a network connectivity. So if you do not have an existing VNet or a virtual network, you can create one in here. This is a brand new environment, so it's all 
already created a virtual net and a subnet for my virtual machine. Um, and if you do not need a public IP, you can select none. But in this case, I'm going to access my virtual machine over RDP using the public IP. So I will need a public IP for my virtual machine in this case. Now there's another way that you can access your virtual machine over the internet using Azure Bastion, but that is going to cost you more money because that's a paid service provided by Azure without you having to attach a public IP to your virtual machine. I will show you how to use Azure Bastion in another tutorial, but for now, I'm just gonna stick with a public IP. Now, network security groups um, let you control what inbound and outbound connectivity your um, virtual machine or the subnet that it's attached to is going to have. So there are two ways that you can attach a network security group. One is to the subnet and the other one is to the actual network card of the Azure virtual machine. Um, it is highly recommended that you do this on the subnet level, not on the actual NIC level of the VM. But for this particular tutorial, I'm just going to stick with basic because I'm just going to attach the NIC to the network card just to show you how it works. But in production, make sure that your NICs are attached, that, that your NSGs or network security groups are attached at the subnet level. Otherwise, you will have to manage the NSG rules at the subnet at the subnet level as well as at the network card level of the actual VM. So if you've got any questions about NSGs, just put a comment below and I'll answer them. Now ne the next thing to do is select what public inbound ports are enabled. So RDP is enabled. Obviously there's a warning saying this is recommended for testing, but we're gonna secure it to allow only RDP from our own source IP address. I'm going to tick this checkbox so when I delete it, the public IP um, is also deleted. If you have, if your VM size supports accelerated networking, I highly recommend that you enable accelerated networking as well. Unfortunately, B2MS does not, so I do not have that choice. I'm going to go next. Now, in here, there are several um, settings that you may wish to enable. If you enable auto shutdown, it configures your virtual machine to shut down automatically daily, um, and you can select a time. Obviously, this is only for testing. In production environments, usually virtual machines run 24-7, um, and you only restart them when you're updating them or when there's a uh, specific requirement for that. So, um, But I just want to show you that if you want to do enable auto shutdown, you have the option to do so. I'm just going to untick that option. Uh, patch orchestration options, um, I've just left it as default, automatic update, so you don't have to, to worry about that. Windows um, will handle that for you. Now, I go next. Um, you can enable um, diagnostics. Um, so in case your VM run into a trouble or it doesn't start, you want to check the logs, um, you will need good diagnostics, but I do not need it in this instance, so I'm just going to disable it. Um, but in production, it's recommended that you have good diagnostics enabled as well. You can enable guest OS diagnostics as well, and you can enable application health monitoring as well, depending on your requirements. Now let's go next. Um, in here, um, there's nothing really that you need to worry about at this stage. Just read through the options and enable if anything is required, but I do not think for most of you, you don't really have to do anything in this advanced um, setting. So let's go next. I don't have any tags. Tags are just um, helpful when it comes to billing. If you want to assign a cost center number or a tag so that you can filter the, uh, the resources with their respective costs for billing purposes, but I don't need that in this stage. So I'm just going to go click review and create. Seems like something's not right. Let me just go back to the basic one. Okay, usernames must not include reserved words. So I'm just going to have to give it a different name. I'll call it test admin. And let, let's go to review and create. 
the final validation is running it should be good to go okay now we're gonna go ahead and click create okay so the deployment has been completed let's go to the resource so this is our virtual machine which has been created now expand the settings by clicking on this little arrow icon up at the top go to network settings and we are going to secure the RDP connectivity so click on RDP now in here instead of source any we're going to select IP addresses and you're going to go to this website so on another web browser uh, window go to ping.eu which is going to give you your source IP so my source IP is this so I'm just going to copy my source IP and paste it here and click save which means RDP connectivity is only allowed from my source IP so you've secured the um, RDP connection now and the little exclamation mark that was there before is gone now so which means you're good to go now in order to connect to the virtual machine that you just created click on the connect icon in here and then simply download the RDP file once it's downloaded just double click on it I'm just gonna take this and click connect and I am going to Put the password in hit enter and just tick this you're getting this because you do not have the certificate installed on your local computer for this remote computer that you're connect to, connecting to so it's thinking that it is um, not safe to connect but in order for you to get rid of this you can just simply add the certificate of this remote computer to the trusted certificates of your local computer if you want to know how to do that I can do another video for that at a later stage so just put a comment below if you want to know how to do that I'm just gonna go and click yes and we will be connected to our virtual machine in a little while All right, guys, so we are connected to our virtual machine. Um, that's it for this video. I hope you learned something new. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. I'll catch you guys in the next one. If you've got any questions, please put it in the comments below, and I'll answer them as soon as I can. Until next one, take care and have a good day. Bye-bye.